20 years since one of the most infamous crimes in North Texas history. Two young brothers stabbed to death in their Rowlett home. Their mother now on death row for their murders. Yeah, but even now, all this time later, the Darley Routier case is still very controversial. Did she do it? Or was it an intruder, as she has always claimed? New tonight, NBC5 Scott Gord re-examines a crime that has captivated North Texas for two decades. Oh no, Damon's driving. Damon, you drive! They look like an all-American family. Darlie Routier. Darlie. And her husband, Darren, owned an electronics company. They had three sons. Six-year-old Devin was just three days away from turning seven. What's your name? Devin. Devin what? Devin Musketeer. Five-year-old Damon, the second oldest. Say hi, Damon. What? Say hi. Hi. And Drake, the baby. I go get you. What? You're embarrassing. They made their home an upscale roulette and seemed the picture of happiness. Then suddenly, at 2.30 a.m. on June 6, 1996, uh, one, Charlie Routier told police she was sleeping downstairs with Devin and Damon when someone broke in and without saying a word, stabbed all three of them. Her husband and baby were upstairs and weren't hurt, but Devin and Damon were both killed. Darley had stab wounds to her arm, shoulder, and neck. Uh, I got the call around 3 o'clock in the morning. Rowlett Police Lieutenant David Neighbors, then the crime scene supervisor, rushed to the Routier's home, knowing right away it would be a major case. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, we had two children that were dead. Uh, had a mother that uh, had a cut to her neck. Darley Routier was released from the hospital after a few days. Happy birthday to you. Happy the family decided to throw a birthday party for Devin and celebrated at the gravesite with silly string. Police say they found that behavior unusual and even inappropriate. Some people quietly wondered if it really happened the way Darley Routier claimed. Gossip is the biggest evil in the world. And unfortunately, there's nothing you can do to stop it. But she and her husband cooperated with police, and at first, they believed her. We were operating under the assumption that, you know, this was an intruder. But then, neighbor says, detectives focused more on the bloody crime scene. Physical evidence, if it's properly collected, is a silent witness, and it's not prejudiced. And he says it started telling a different story. As the case progressed, we started seeing that uh, there was inconsistencies in the statements that were made in the physical evidence for we were collecting. Um, well, the point of entry. The point of entry, the screen that the intruder had supposedly cut. Police say fibers on this bread knife showed it was used to cut the screen. It was found in a block with other knives in the Routier's kitchen. And then there was the motion activated security light in the Routier's backyard. So I timed it, stayed on about 17 minutes. Neighbor says when the first officers arrived right after the 911 call, they noticed the light turned on when they went in the backyard to search for the suspect. If the killer had gone out the door Routier claimed, police say it would have still been on. Investigators also say Routier's clothing had blood spatters on the shoulders consistent with her wielding the knife. So that, that cast off is another piece of evidence and it puts that knife in her hand. So things are starting to add up here. Yeah. 13 days after the murders, police arrested Darley Routier and charged her with capital murder. She never cried until she was told that she was under arrest for the capital murder uh, of her child. Do you think she saw that coming? I don't think she saw it coming that night, no. Her case moved quickly in court. She stood up and in a loud voice said, not guilty. After deliberating eight hours, a jury convicted her and sentenced her to death. But to this day, her case still stirs debate. Kathy Cruz is a reporter at the Hood County News and wrote a book about the Routier case called Dateline Purgatory. I think it's very likely that the state got this wrong. She interviewed Darlie Routier on death row. Uh, how did she come across? Perfectly fine. Likeable, friendly, um, certainly normal. What about the evidence at the crime scene? Cruz offers different explanations. 
The fibers from the screen on the Routier's bread knife, for example, could have come from police fingerprint brushes. I do think there was definitely a rush to judgment. That unusual silly string celebration at the gravesite, which prosecutors showed to the jury. It's proof of nothing. So what? What that jury never saw was footage of the hour-long memorial service that took place just before the birthday celebration, during which appropriate um, grief was shown. Routier supporters argue at the very least she deserves a new trial. And now let the state put on the same evidence they put on 20 years ago and let's see if it flies today. Police and prosecutors say the trial was fair, the investigation solid. Is there any doubt in your mind 20 years later that she's guilty? Absolutely not. For Darley Routier, not much has changed over the last 20 years. She remains locked up here in Gatesville, one of six Texas women on death row. Her attorneys continue their appeals. No execution date has been set. If and when she's executed, do you plan to be there? Uh, if I'm allowed to witness it, I probably will. It's a solemn occasion when someone loses, loses their life. Uh, but somebody has to be an advocate, you know, and the system has to be an advocate for those two children. The two children, Devin and Damon, if they were still alive, they would be 25 and 26 Thank years old. Bye-bye, Wake, bye-bye. And that was NBC5 Scott Gordon reporting. We asked Darlie Routier for an interview. We also asked her now ex-husband, Darren, who is living in Lubbock. They both. Even after more than 20 years, but there's been, never been nothing going on. Darley Routier's attorneys have been searching for evidence, one goal in hand. We're just looking for a new trial. A new trial for the Rowlett mother who maintains an unidentified intruder, savagely stabbed her young sons to death, and stabbed and injured her in June of 1996. Routier was found guilty and sent to death row. Defense attorney Steve Cooper says they're on the third round of DNA testing, some being examined right now. It's specks of blood, suspected blood or other DNA, but this is really a blood uh, case in various locations uh, that would be, um, that has not been identified as being Darley's or one of the boys. Asked if any results so far are groundbreaking. There's a couple of things I am excited about. However, it's not groundbreaking as I believe you are using that term. Cooper says some previous testing was of no use, while time has taken a toll on other potential evidence. The 85J unknown fingerprint was in blood, and we've tested that and there's no DNA in it. It's just degraded over time. Relic Police Lieutenant David Neighbors, then the crime scene supervisor, told NBC5 two years ago, no doubt Routier is guilty. Is there any doubt in your mind, 20 years later, that she's guilty? Absolutely not. As for evidence proving an intruder? We don't have that yet, but we're still working. Cooper says the work to save Routier's life continues. In Dallas, Maria Guerrero, NBC5. DNA evidence freed Darlie Routier. The Rowlett mother has been on death row for more than two decades, convicted in the stabbing death of her young son. Still, supporters are hoping a fresh wave of media attention will also force a fresh look at the evidence. They rallied in Dallas today, and our Robbie Owens was there. She joins us live at the Crowley Courthouse. Robbie? Well, Gilma, not only did these supporters rally, they came with swag bags, complete with T-shirts, water bottles, and a heart-shaped tag here that they told me that Rautier designed herself to thank people who came from as far away as Arizona and Indianapolis to be here today to show their support. Their numbers were few. As the public, we are outraged. And I know that the judicial system gets it wrong, and in this case, they have got it wrong. But their defense of Dolly Routier, fear. At least in 96, it wasn't about innocence or guilt. It was like she was guilty before she went in that courtroom. Among them, 
Gratia's mother. For two decades, she has insisted that her daughter was wrongly convicted. The New York-based Innocence Project is now looking into the case, and she says they both remain hopeful. She's getting evidence come back that's favorable for her. And again, we knew that would happen, but we just didn't know it would take a lifetime. The case has been a constant source of media attention, including a documentary last year that has spawned a new generation of support. My look on the justice system changed. I want that fingerprint ran. I want any DNA that there is ran, and that's why we're here. It really doesn't uh, pay to put on a documentary 22 years later to show someone's guilty, uh, that's not controversial. Still, one of the prosecution attorneys says nothing in two decades has made him question the conviction. Lots of circumstantial evidence. Uh, then the defense went, Dolly Gutierrez testified, and she was caught in a bunch of lies. She wound up being our, probably our, our, our best witness to prove her guilt. I think by next year at this time, she'll be out here and we'll be celebrating together. God, as with many issues, time will most likely have the final word. The group plans to rally at the state capitol in Austin on tomorrow. Live at the Crowley Courthouse in Dallas, Robbie Owens, CBS. New this midday, the family of a notorious North Texas convicted killer is still fighting for her freedom. Darley Routier is one of only a handful of women on death row in Texas. Her two young sons, Devin and Damon, were stabbed to death in their home back in June of 1996. Routier claimed an intruder killed the boys and slashed her throat before escaping into the night. But police, prosecutors and a jury did not buy that defense. And Darley Routier was convicted and sentenced to die for one of those boys' murders. Our Ben Russell is live in Rockwall here at midday where family members, friends, and other supporters honor the memory of those children. Ben? And their belief here, uh, Evan, is that there is no way Darley Routier would have done this. They say she is innocent, that she would have had no motive, no reason for killing these two young boys, her very own sons. Now, we are here in the cemetery, the very cemetery where these two young boys are buried together, uh, Damon and Devin. In fact, we are here on what would have been Devin's 30th birthday. And today marks 23 years since another gathering that this family had that they tell us they believe helped to convict Darley Routier, and that was an incident uh, where the family was videotaped shooting silly string at the boys' gravesite. This video, shot by Channel 5 on this day, June the 14th in 1996, was shown to the jury. Prosecutors made the case that that was bizarre and not the way a truly innocent woman, a grieving mother, would or should behave. And that's saying nothing of, of the evidence the prosecution put on in the case, including what investigators claimed was a staged crime scene. But Dolly's mother, even after all this time, has a message for those who claim her daughter could have or would have killed her own kids. So they're definitely wrong. And I think that a lot of them were just like the police and the prosecution, where they had their targets set on Darley right from the beginning rather than doing a real investigation. They just need to stop and think about what is being presented. Don't think about the things that swayed them like a lot of them didn't like the silly string, but they didn't see the prayer service. We had 20 or 30 people at a prayer service for two hours before that. The silly string was for the children because it was Devin's birthday. And again, here we are on what would have been that young boy's 30th birthday. Darlie Key, the woman who we just heard from, the mother of Darlie Routier, she believes that her daughter will be exonerated within the year because of DNA evidence that in some cases is being retested, in other cases that is being tested for the first time, that she believes will prove that her daughter could not have done this.